Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Conversations. I am so excited to jump into this week's topic. Really haven't talked about this a lot in conversations, but we're going to be talking about communication. I believe communication is imperative regardless if you work in the church, regardless of any of your vocations listening to this. I believe communication is one of the most important things as a leader, as a parent, as a husband, as a spouse. Doesn't matter what you are, communication is a part of your life. And we know this, that 90% of communication is non-verbal. So going into this conversation, I want you to I want you to know that there's a lot of things. There's a lot of different tips. There's a lot of different, honestly, great resources that we're not really going to hit into. I really want to just hit six really ideologies or philosophical concepts when it comes to communication. Because if we can get the why behind communication, if we can even articulate our thoughts in a way that would really speak to an audience, I believe the world could change. I believe your business could get better. I believe your marriage and your relationships can get better. So really, we're going to jump into key thoughts when it comes to communication. And we'll just go from there. And again, I always like to say this, man, I, I don't believe that I'm an expert really in anything. I believe that over the course of my life, I've had the best leaders in the world pour into me. I believe I've done a good job of listening. And really, a lot of these thoughts come from an accumulation of a long time of listening and being around really, really good communicators, regardless of the space, whether that's in the church space or not. I do believe a lot of this is relevant to preaching, but it does not just speak to preachers. So really jumping into number one is the secret sauce is being true and being authentic. This isn't in the notes, but your authority is in your authenticity. So a lot of times what we'll end up doing is We'll, we'll think or insinuate that, man, I have to put on a specific persona or a way that my audience that I'm speaking to is going to like. The reality is, is people have a really easy gauge in 2024 to know if you're being authentic or not. So uh, it's our responsibility to be true and authentic to ourselves. That is not mean don't prepare. A lot of the conversation we'll talk about today is when it comes to preparation because preparation really is what sets good communicators from bad communicators. But really, like I said, the secret sauce is being true and authentic. If it doesn't feel like a burning fire, it may be inauthentic. So what that means is, man, is it coming from your heart, your belly, or is it just coming from your mind? And when it just comes from our minds, we know we're only going to transfer that into other people's minds. The problem is communication is speaking to hearts, speaking to spirits, it's speaking to much more than just minds. So the reality is, like I said, it's a burning fire. And if it's not, doesn't feel like a burning fire anyways, and that just said, that it's not, it's not just the reality of it is, it feels like it. Like it's actually coming from a place that you've lived it, you've processed it, you've been through this thing. That does not mean that you can't speak because you haven't been through something. I think that's also a fallacy or a lie is, I mean, you got to go through something to be able to teach on it. I think that is the biggest lie because honestly, the people who haven't been through something are the best people because they've observed it and they've watched it from the sidelines. That's why a lot of the times the best coaches are the people who actually weren't in the game. They were the people who were observing the game. So it doesn't feel like burning fire may be authentic. Real communication comes from who you are, not what you know. We, we've heard this a thousand times from John Maxwell. We teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. So if you're in it for life change, if you're in it for true transformation, we need to know that it comes from who we are, which means there needs to be a level of self-awareness when we're communicating to know this is not really who I am. I probably shouldn't speak to this because it isn't who I am. And knowing that and knowing yourself and only speaking to the things that, hey, man, this is who I am. This is a burning fire in my heart. And the only thing I can do is make sure you know it and you can feel it the way I do. So real communication comes from who you are, not what you know. And again, people are looking for something that has changed you, not just what you know. People are looking, people are hungry for change that's in you, transformation that you've experienced because you might not give the perfect recipe or you might, might not give them the, hey, this is the three-step process to this. But what they're looking for is, man, this guy's been through something and he's on the other side, and I'm not on the other side yet, 
By the way, you don't have to have a testimony that's completely done yet. A testimony is in the midst of something as well. So again, these are all these are all concepts and ideas for you to process. But again, people are looking for something that has changed you, not just what you know. And last one on this specific point, stop trying to sound like your favorite preacher. I love, I love preachers. I, I listen to messages all the time. I listen to sermons all the time. That is my life. That is, literally since I got saved, that's been one of my favorite things to do is listen to preachers. Where What ends up happening, though, is we're all chameleons. And if you don't do a good job of self-discovery and understanding yourself and your voice, what you'll end up doing is you will be end up sounding like other communicators. And when you don't have a level of self-awareness or you don't have people in your life telling you, hey, man, that doesn't sound like you. Like when you get off the platform and when you're on the platform, it's two completely different people. That's a scary place to live. So we got we got to be super aware of, yes, I do love listening to blank communicator, blank preacher. I love listening to it. And I'm going to do my best to not regurgitate not just their content, but their their style. Because you also need to think about this. Culture is in context of where you live. So a communicator who lives in Miami should probably preach and sound like the city of Miami, just as much as New York, Omaha, Nebraska, Los Angeles. It doesn't matter because you're supposed to speak to the city in the local context. Yes, there are clips. Yes, there are videos. But the reality is everyone that you would probably listen to, they're not speaking to the world. They're speaking to their city just as much as you need to as well. So number two, communication is not about content. It's about connection. I've said this for years just because you get content out does not mean you're communicating. So I've seen this a lot. They're just reading through notes. And again, notes are healthy. Notes are great because they keep you on point. I understand that it's not the easiest thing in the world to memorize a 30 or 45 minute message. The reality is, is though, if you're focused on content more than connection, you are not communicating. You might just be sharing thoughts or ideas and, and the, the problem is, is you get distance, you get a distance from your audience. So when you get a distance from your audience and you're just getting through content, what you're doing is you're not serving the audience. We have to be self-aware if we're going to be communicators from a platform, just as much as if you're at dinner and you're talking the whole time and you're not letting the other person talk back or have a response, you're not communicating. Just because you get content out does not mean you're communicating. So the question is, did they just listen to you or did they hear you? Because I've, I've been in a lot of rooms where I'm listening to the person, but I'm not hearing them, if that makes sense. What I'm doing is I'm just hearing what they're saying and it's not hitting my heart. It's not creating life change. It's not even compelling, to be honest. There's no conviction behind it. Every single time we get done communicating, even on this podcast, I need to ask myself, did I connect with the audience? Did I actually hit a pain point and did I give them enough resources and honestly observations that I've lived so that when you get done with this podcast, you can go, sure, Josh is great and I need to focus on myself and I need to get a little bit better. That to me is serving an audience. So again, communication, our, the, the way we communicate, our cadence, our pitch, all that stuff is important because it serves the audience not because you sound good or it's because again, it isn't a performance. That's where people get in the lie or confused on communication because it is a performance. You're not performing for people. Obviously you're worshiping God through teaching of his word, especially in preaching. So you got to get out of the way for sure. But there is a level of man, somebody just drove across town to go hear God's word and I didn't prepare. We would never allow that on a worship team on the kids team and somebody's not prepared and this is way going way ahead here but man we got to be prepared and we got to be able to connect with our audience number three it's very very similar but getting through your notes is overrated the whole goal of communication is serving the people not getting through your notes the goal is not getting through your notes i've, I've been around some of the best preachers in the world sure they have notes but more than notes they're listening to the audience not just listening as in with their ears, but with their spirit and with their eyes. You got to be able to know how to test a room. You got to be able to know how to 
insert humor in the beginning to see if there is actually a laugh or response or if it's a flat room. Don't feel like you need to be the superhero when the room is flat. That's not on you to lift. I believe there are ways that we can help shift people, get people connected to the message, help them bring themselves in the story in which we're sharing. Absolutely. But again, getting through your notes is overrated. The whole goal of communication is serving the people, not getting through your notes. Because the reality is, is when God shows up, the sermon's over. The message is over. Because the whole point of communication, of preaching anyways, is to get people connected to God. Like, we are not the superhero in this story, just as much as the welcome team is not, or the security, or kids team, or worship team. We are all the mailman. We're, per- we're not... We're delivering the mint. We're delivering the package of Jesus, of his word to people, a.k.a. getting through your notes and just getting content out just to get it out is completely not the goal. The goal is connection. Is your message, is your sermon, is that scripture connecting with the audience? And you'll be able to tell if it's not because the room will feel dead. It'll feel flat. And when a room feels flat, it's either a lack of expectation from your team, and or it is a lack of preparation and the message delivery. So we need to do a great job of knowing how to read rooms. I've said this a lot of episodes, but to be honest, the greatest leaders I've ever been around are people who understand and can feel rooms. When you walk into the lobby in your church, what do you feel? When you're standing in the parking lot of your church, what do you feel? When you go to the mall, and I'm not just saying like mercy or or discernment. I'm feeling I'm feeling culture. I and again with my eyes, with my ears, like I'm sensing it, I'm feeling it, I'm engulfed in it to know, oh, it feels off in here. What do we need to do to make sure it doesn't feel like this? And there are ways and things that we can do. It might be the music, it might be the service layout. Again, there's so many different variables here, but my responsibility, if I'm preaching with the word, I need to bring the word. I need to make sure that, sure, my delivery is important, but also receptivity is important. Because if there's no receptivity, what you're doing is you're just talking to an empty room, and God never called us to preach to empty pews. I don't know where we thought it was cool to get people to leave our church or to get people not engaged. It's like, no, God has called you to a city to fill the room, to help preach the gospel so people can find Jesus. So hitting this point over and over and over, getting through your notes is overrated. And you don't have to be an expert communicator, by the way, to to get married to your notes or to not get married to your notes. You don't have to be an expert communicator to know these notes are not hitting. The room is not excited. The room is not leaning, leaning in. They're not again, receptive to this message. Therefore, I need to make sure that I'm filled up enough that I know how to take what I'm communicating and deliver it in a different way so they actually will be able to hear me. So again, getting through your notes overrated. Number four, life is preparation. We, uh, there's so many books and so many videos and podcasts about how to prepare a message, how to, how to prepare a sermon, how to prepare a teaching to your staff. Here's the best principle live your life and keep your phone notes out all the time sure there's an illustration there's a thought god will drop a download to you but the reality is is your life is the preparation you are engulfed in scripture you are engulfed in community and when we're 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 engaged in community and we're actually hearing the people that we're serving hearing their problems hearing their thoughts hearing the things in pastoral coffees and conversations when we're we're hearing the pain of our city, what we can do is we can go to God with that and go, God, what is a right now word for that specific city, my city, the city that I live in? I'm, I'm going to coffee shops. I'm listening at the grocery store. I'm sitting in libraries and, and just trying to get around people who might not be engaging in church yet. Man, how do we get around them to listen to them, to hear them, so that we can prepare a message that would be relevant to them. Because there's nothing worse than you communicating an irrelevant message. By the way, Jesus is always relevant. There's a whole nother conversation here, but preach Jesus or go home. Like, we're not into TED Talks. We're not into 
the seven steps to financial success. All that stuff is important, and I believe that is the best possible teaching for a Tuesday night small group in your home or a Thursday morning coffee with a friend. But when we're thinking about Sunday mornings, when we're thinking about preaching the gospel, there is one gospel, and it's good news. People are coming in bur- burdened, broken, bruised, really hurting. I mean, we're all experiencing things that we've never experienced as a country, as a world. So when we think about that, when we think about the cry of our city, the pain of our city, and we want to go in and just do a, 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 another Sunday, it's just another Sunday, it's just another message, I had to get through my notes, and then I can go to brunch afterwards. Like, are we joking? This is the most important thing we could ever do as a Christian, as a leader, as a pastor. Preach the gospel. Preach Jesus or go home because he is the only solution. All the other stuff is great, and I believe all of those things should be taught through discipleship. But when we think about a Sunday morning, when we think about a person who doesn't know Jesus, who hasn't been to church in two years, and they're at their last wit, they're at their last hope, and they're going, I've tried everything else. I'm so tired. I'm going to give church a try again. And they get in their car. They're driving. They're insecure. They're like, I don't know anyone there. There's a lot of people. I'm a little nervous. They go in. They sit down. They're at their last hope, and we're not preaching Jesus. Tell me how that makes sense. Jesus is the only solution. Jesus is the only message that we should be communicating because he is the answer. He is the Messiah. He is the resurrection. He is the life. John 14, 6. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. There is no other context to that. So life is preparation. Sure, study and prepare, but you always should be looking around and observing your life. Preparation is compiled, is a compiling effect of listening and learning. I'm always listening and I'm always learning because when I'm always learning, there's new thoughts, there's new insights, there's new sentences that God gives me, little idioms, little thoughts that I'm going to put in my phone and think through, and I'm going to be listening. So if you aren't feeling your content, let's say Friday night, you're going through your message notes and you're going, I'm just not feeling it. You need to ask yourself why, because it it usually goes back to two things. I wasn't listening or I wasn't learning. If I'm not listening, that means that my message not, might not be relevant to my audience. And if I'm not learning, it might just feel mundane to me, but that's okay because there's somebody who's never heard this message before. I, I've heard this tons of times in church where it's like, man, we just need to get the meat. Pastor, when are you going to give me the meat? It's like, when did Jesus stop being the meat? When did Jesus stop being the core principle of every single message? The last 10 minutes of every single Sunday's message should be the gospel. So life is preparation. If you aren't feeling your content, just ask yourself why, ask God why, ask a friend why. Hey, I'm not really feeling my notes. Would you mind looking at these? Just make sure that I'm maybe I'm heading the right direction of on time word for the people in our church. Number five, the ultimate goal of preaching is to get out of the way. You could insert serving, by the way. The ultimate goal of serving is to get out of the way. That's what preaching is. You're serving an audience. So people shouldn't remember you at the end of your Sunday. Man, that pastor was so great. He was such a good communicator. All that stuff's obviously so sweet, and we've all been told that type of stuff. But the reality is, is we need to get out of the way. They need to experience Jesus. Our our best Sundays, our best stories, testimonies, is when people leave and they're thinking more about Jesus. They're they're more convicted. They're more thinking about, man, that scripture really hit me today. Not, man, that pastor was such a good communicator. Just as much as the worship team, right? When we're leading worship, the person leaves, they're driving to lunch, and they're going, man, that singer had such a good voice. And again, that's not a bad thing. We love that. We love when our singers have good voices. We love when our preachers have good communication skills. And it's our responsibility for them to know it's not about me. Anybody could get up on the platform and preach if they read their Bible. The best preparation is just to read your Bible and to pray. So if you can read your Bible and you can pray, you can preach. Hold a microphone, share what God did in your life this week, share your testimony, or just share observations from Scripture. There you go. There's your preacher. So again, people should not remember you. They need to remember Jesus, and they need to remember the gospel. So you can't serve somebody and think about yourself at the same time. So when you're when you're Again, this actually goes back to shyness and 
stage fright. And I, I'm just not a communicator. Everybody's a communicator. Just the way you communicate, the way you deliver it might be different. Just because if you've had one conversation in your history of your life, if you sent one text message, you know how to communicate. You know how to communicate. It just might look different than somebody who's extroverted, flamboyant. We understand that for sure. You can't serve somebody, though, and think about yourself at the same time. So you can't be nervous when you're not thinking about yourself. Again, nerves come because we're intimidated of people, how they're going to think about us, how, what they're going to think about us. Maybe it's an insecurity of yours, something going on in your mind. But again, if you remove yourself and say, I'm just delivering mail today, and I'm just going to talk about Jesus for 30 minutes. Because the reality is, is if I asked you to talk about your parents for, just tell me about your parents. You would easily be able to go, yeah, Josh, my parents are great. They, they were such a great, you would talk my ear off about how great your parents are. That's what you do on Sundays. That's what preaching is. Hey, tell me about, tell me, tell me about Jesus. And again, sure, we use illustrations and stories from our lives to help people see the scripture and bring it to life. But all that goes back to, man, I'm just talking about somebody else for 30 minutes. It's not about me. I'm getting out of the way. I want people to think about Jesus when they leave church, not think about me. So you can't serve somebody and think about yourself at the same time. We've got to get out of the way. Especially, I mean, anyone listening to this, regardless of your context, if you're serving somebody, again, that's the best place to be as a leader, as a friend, as a parent, as a husband. Man, if I'm serving, my, if I'm serving Lexi, if I'm serving my parents, if I'm serving my friends, if I'm serving in my church, man, what a great place to be because we know the leader of all is the servant of all. So please be the CSO in your organization, the chief servant officer. Nobody should serve more than you. Nobody should give more than you. Be committed to the cause, not the applause. Last point here, think about how you want the room to feel when it ends. I heard a great thought one time is the the message isn't done until God's there. So there are times where people actually will go over their time and we got to be a really good steward of our time that we're given. If it's 30 minutes, stick 30 minutes. And there is also times where we need to sit. And again, we always talk faster than we think we do. So we really need to slow down. We really need to be intentional about your pauses, even processing. It's okay. The room doesn't know, by the way, you're, you're doing a bad job because nobody truthfully knows and understands communication there's probably a couple people in the whole room, right? Out of a hundred people in your church, there's probably two people who are like, oh, he's probably as new at communication. Most people don't even understand all that stuff. So again, you got to process, even pray about this. God, what do you want the room to feel like when I'm done preaching this message? Should it feel light? Should it feel heavy? Should there be, should there be a, an altar moment? Should there be life change? All that stuff, again, you need to think about it just as much as, you should write out your introductions because there are most of the times we're just thinking about the points. We're not thinking about how do we actually get people connected to this message? Our endings, because what ends up happening is we start strong, we build it up, and our endings usually fall flat. And again, this goes back to even working with your worship team, with your production team, to make sure the ending transitions well. Because a lot of a lot of the the negative parts of church in ways that I've observed a lack of excellence is in those transition moments to bring back the room, to go back into worship, to to pray, to do a salvation moment. However you do and steward that moment, just be really careful that it's done with due diligence, with unity, in proactive communication. So practical as ever, last point, like I said, envision where you want to go. Where are you taking people? We should be taking people on a journey. There should be a tension point in our communication. You, I've heard Judah Smith say this. You're taking them through a forest, and there should be a point of them journeying in the forest to ask themselves, where are we? However amount of time within that message, they should be asking themselves, hey, where, where are we going? And there's always got to be an impact at the end because it's Jesus, again, end with scripture, end with a thought, end with something that is going to give them a good download for the week to be able to go to the next day and talk to their coworker who doesn't know Jesus about the message. Because the reality is, is I've, I first ever message I ever preached. I was like 16. I sat with my youth pastor at a Panera and I went through my notes. I remember driving. I drove like two hours away to this coffee shop. I was sitting there, no concept of how to write a sermon, how to do anything. 
all I knew was I was passionate about my friends knowing Jesus in high school. So I set up Panera, and my youth pastor, Tom, goes, Josh, can you summarize your message in one minute to me? Or even one sentence? Can you, can you tell me your message in one sentence? It's like, I, I cannot. I, I don't know. And I remember it was even about like, having a mentor, having a, a person discipling you. And I got to that point, and I go, I can't do it. He's like, well, then you, you haven't processed it enough because if you can't say it in one sentence, you truthfully don't know it yet. And that's okay. Just continue to dig, continue to research, continue to listen and learn to the point where my message can be articulated in one thought. Because when somebody can get to one thought, that one thought can go into their Monday. And they might have a 55-minute message, but there's one thought that's stuck with them. People spend a lot of money to go to conferences, not for teachings, but for sentences. Sentences change lives because what happens is sentences turn into thoughts and they could be memorized. And I'm not even saying you need to have a thesis statement or a sticky statement in your message. What I'm saying is know your content and know it, know it so much that you can consolidate it into one thought. When you're at that point, it is time to communicate it. And the last thought here is, man, we need to communicate. It is not a rep. Dude, ever, don't ever use that language. When somebody, you don't want to preach or you're looking to give somebody else an opportunity to preach on Sundays or Wednesdays or at your youth camp, we're not giving them reps. This isn't practice. We don't practice on people. If we're going to, if we're going to play, we're going to practice. If we're going to play, we're going to rehearse, which means practice your message you should preach your message 50 times to yourself before you ever preach it to somebody else. And I can tell you what, people know whether you practice or you didn't. Not just because your filler words, because of your confidence. Confidence comes from preparation. Again, you want to be a great communicator, be a listener, be a learner. I hope these thoughts helped you. I believe, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert at communication. I believe, again, I have done so much research, so much talk conversations with people who are the best communicators in the world. And I just want to insert six thoughts to you. Again, these are the key points. And I believe, again, if you could just process these, write them down, think about them, I promise you, you might get a little bit better. So number one, the secret sauce is being true and being authentic. Number two, communication is not about content. It's about connection. Number three, getting your notes. Getting through your notes is overrated. Number four, Life is preparation. Number five, the ultimate goal of preaching is to get out of the way. And number six, think about how you want the room to feel when it ends. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Conversations. I believe this is episode 101. It has been such a journey and so much fun to go on this journey with each and every one of you all over the world listening to this podcast. I just can't thank you enough. Make sure to like this video if you're watching it on youtube maybe leave a review on podcast or comment again we're just trying to offer as much resources as possible we have some great conversations coming up with some guests that i believe will add tremendous value to your life thank you so much again we'll see you next week